Hello there, my name's Brandon and I make pictures out of tiny squares. And today I'm gonna to be making a pixel art storefront piece, which is gonna be another entry into like this whole series of storefront pieces that I've done in the past. Uh, this is just a design concept that I like coming back to from time to time and just kind of finding new themes for it. The canvas size I'm working on for this is 240 by 240 pixels which really that sizing it just kind of dates back to what I've always used since the first one of these that I ever made. I, I can't quite remember how I landed on that size, to be honest. Uh, but either way, I just obviously like to keep all these pieces at the same resolution, and I feel like that gives them this consistent style throughout the series. So the first thing I'm doing here is just laying down some line work to get the basic structure of the building framed out. And actually, you know, the first thing I, I really did, like even before this, uh, was to work out the design on paper first. I, I did some rough sketches and I came up with the concept. And now I'm sort of eyeballing a translation of that idea into pixel form. For me, it's way faster to iterate on paper and just experiment with what the different shapes for the architecture can be and things like that. And then to take that basic idea and get on with the pixeling. So the theme for today's storefront is going to be an apothecary, which is basically an old fashioned term to describe someone who formulates and prepares medicines and otherwise is just knowledgeable about remedies and that sort of thing. Now, I like to imagine, or I hope rather, that there's a subset of you watching who saw the title with the word apothecary and had the thought like, I, I think I know what's happening. I, I bet he was watching that anime series, The Apothecary Diaries. And that's how he knew to pull out this cool word and use it for the theme of this artwork. And so I'm here to admit to you, yeah, that's exactly the case. I, I started watching this show and the premise of the show is essentially uh, the lead character who works as an apothecary ends up investigating mysteries and uh, various poisoning attempts that are going on at this palace, uh, which surprisingly, it looks like that's actually a full time job. <laughs> like that's how many poison attempts seem to be popping up in this palace. Um, but she uses her knowledge of materials and chemistry and, and kind of solves the cases. And it's pretty interesting from that uh, aspect. I've just been enjoying that premise so far. And it occurred to me that this would be a fun theme to explore uh, for one of these storefronts, um, specifically the, the formulation and remedy part of it, not the poisonings. Now that series takes place in Imperial China. So my first instinct for the visuals was to do something that draws from that theme. But I ended up kind of in a mood where I, I really wanted to step away from that first instinct thought and, and try to think deeper about it. And so instead, I settled on this design where the building is uh, sort of roughly shaped like a teapot, which I kind of liked as a reference just to the idea of uh, brewing different herbal medicines. I tried to disguise the teapot design a little bit though. Like in world, I don't want it to be that it was an obvious or an intentional thing. It's more like it's a coincidence that there's maybe just a couple ventilation ducts wrapping around the building and maybe it just sort of looks like this as an accident or a coincidence. And for the styling, I wanted to mix um, some cyberpunk imagery with kind of a 1960s like hippie aesthetic. And I've even gone so far as to name the store Flower Power just to <laughs> get that point across and kind of bring that theme to the forefront for the uh, entire shop identity as if they prepare different remedies and maybe cyberpunk stems from medicinal plants and flowers and that sort of stuff. On the upper part of the shop, there's gonna be this messy assembly of monitors and wires. And I'm also going through and adding in some foliage. The way I like to do this is by shaping in a silhouette using a square brush. Uh, and by that, I actually mean a, a brush that's like a two by two or a three by three pixel size brush. And you can kind of broadly, you know, paint in these, these jagged or sharp sort of points that sort of feel like leaves. And so after that silhouette is in place, uh, I'll take one of the lighter colors and then draw in some highlights that follow the direction or the point of those leaves. And in this case, I've also finished off uh, that whole look with some small flowers kind of dotted around everywhere. The color palette that I'm using for this piece is a custom set of colors that I came up with before starting the pixel art. And that way I could just kind of hit the ground running um, and just focus on the pixel art. It's kind of like having the rough sketch in that way, I guess. There's just a lot of prep that you can do before sort of formally starting the artwork that feels like it just makes your life easier along the way. And for me, having a palette already set is one of those things. The way these colors work is that there's kind of the, the pinkish color as the middle tone, and then I've given it two steps of shade tones, which uh, kind of lean you know into purple. And then there's two steps of highlight tones on the other side, which go toward this uh, peach sort of coloring. 
Normally for these storefront pieces, I'll also choose an accent color that's like a strong contrast to what the main color scheme is. And for this case, that would be the kind of lime green that I've selected here, which I thought kind of opened this up into like that 1960s psychedelic sort of look to it. One thing I wanted to mention about the palette is that a lot of times it's actually really hard to design a color palette from scratch and like literally only look at it as a strip of colors like this without actually testing it first to know how the colors are gonna look together. So what I usually do is to take that and just recolor an existing piece of mine to see how those colors would actually sort of mix together within a completed artwork. So in this case, I threw these test colors into an old coffee shop piece and then did a few rounds of iteration to dial in the right levels of brightness and saturation for this. One of the finishing touches that I think is gonna help unify this color theme is just to find some areas where we can actually use all these tones together. Uh, like tossing the pink and green together in the shop logo here. You know, it's one of those things that maybe starts off looking wrong, but if you just do it enough, it, it somehow solidifies itself as being correct in some way. You know, it's like, it's like poetry, it rhymes, uh, or it's like jazz, you know, it's, I guess is the correct analogy here. The final additions here are gonna be some animated components, uh, starting off with these cats. So I've got two black cats and, and they're always a staple of these pieces. And what I did this time was I just uh, grabbed their animations that I've already made from the last time I did a storefront piece. So I had all that tail motion ready to go. There's kind of no use like animating that from scratch every time. In fact, maybe the last time I did it, I might've borrowed those two, I'm not actually sure. Um, and then we of course need uh, the robot shopkeeper so I'm quickly blocking in a shape here for that. And I'm planning on having a lot of motion on the screens near the top of the piece. So I'm gonna keep the animation for the robot pretty simple and just do, you know, kind of a basic bobbing up and down. But he's got a few wires connected up and I think it looks pretty cool just to see those moving along as well. I'm gonna finish this up with uh, some of the details on those screens and, and just a few other things. So let's go ahead and take a look at the final artwork for the Cyberpunk Apothecary. Here we go. Hippies are very interesting to the young. The word love is used by them a lot. They praise the effect on the mind of hallucinatory love. All right, well, there we have it. And uh, I think it came out with kind of a refreshing vibe for this series of pieces maybe a little bit suspicious of a shop compared to some of the other ones. You know, would you trust this man to solve mysteries for you? Uh, you know, I don't know. But uh, either way, we'll close this out with some CRT time. So thank you for watching and take care and keep it square.